Good evening, everyone. This is Asian Movie Pulse Interviews. I am Sean Barry, and tonight I am joined with actress and writer Ayako Fujitani. Ayako has appeared in a ton of movies, including the Heisei Gamera trilogy, directed by Shosuke Kaneko. She's also worked with filmmaker Hideaki Anno, starring in his movie Ritual, also known as Shikijitsu. And she's also been quite popular in the indie craze in movies like Man from Reno, directed by Dave Boyle, and the Surrogate Valentine trilogy. Welcome, Ayako. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. How are you? Good, 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 good. How are you? Can't complain. <laughs> so I guess to kickstart the things off, I guess I'll start here by saying what initially interested you in pursuing acting as a career, like any influences and inspirations? Um, funny you ask. Um, I was always a movie fan. Like, uh, I've always watched movies since when I was little. Um, back then, it was uh, there was not too much, um, you know, PG thirteen or PG fifteen. So, <laughs> since when I was three or four, as as far as I can remember, I was watching horror movies or <laughs> you know sci fi movies or drama, anything. Uh, including, um, well, I grew up in Japan, so, um, so th that's that. Been said, I didn't speak English when I was little, but I was watching English-speaking movies. It didn't matter to me, so I really liked movies, and but I never thought um, I would be an actress. That been said, I, I thought I always uh, would be a writer or novel writer. That's what I used to say when I was little. Um, but then uh, um, this kind of a uh, strange thing happened when was, uh, I think I was 13 years old. Um, this uh, Osaka Film Festival was happening and I grew up in Osaka. And this local Yodogawa magazine creator just came to my mom and said, hey, aren't you, your daughter Ayako might be a fan of Hiroyuki Sanada? And, <laughs> and my mom is like, yes, she is a fan. And she said, oh, oh we're looking for uh, anyone, someone to um, give a bouquet, like flowers on, to him on the stage. And would, would she be interested? And I said, yes. So I went to this uh, film festival, Osaka Film Festival, um, to just to give him flowers, like a bou bouquet of flowers um, mm. on the stage. And then, so I was invited to the, um, the party, like an opening party for the film festival. So it, since it's a film festival, there was a bunch of filmmakers and actors and all those people were there. And I was just sitting, in the corner of the room doing nothing because I didn't know no one and I, I got nothing to do with them and <laughs> being a wallflower, you know? <laughs> and then, but apparently Shusuke Kanako was there. He saw me and he contacted someone to know who I was. And one day my mom's, my mom's phone rang and they asked me, um, if I'm interested to go to audition for a camera. Nice. And I was terrified. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it because I never thought about acting. But my curiosity won. I wanted to see how the movie was made. So I went to the audition. And um, um, I did horribly. I couldn't even uh, read one line. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know, it's funny. And they were like, can you read this line? Can you just say, can, can you see G Gamera pretend he's there and say this line? And I couldn't. And they, they asked me, are you shy? And I said, yes. He's and right went, there. Yeah, he's right I there. couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I went home thinking, oh my God, that was terrifying. I will never do it again phone rang again and then they said she got the part <laughs> and I was like why but again my curiosity won uh, I really really wanted to see how the movie was made I thought oh I get to see the set 
and I get to see the cameras and actors. So I said yes. And since then, it's just um, I kept on going. Sometimes I stopped, but I kept on going in a very unique way, I guess I would say, <laughs> even if it's about myself. Um, yeah, um, but it's always I have this view of all this um, interested in how the movie is made and more about creation than just acting. I guess I mean just just acting is a big deal, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So that's how I got in. Long story, sorry. <laughs> that's a great story, and wow, what a what a um, what an amazing way to start to getting into that career was basically serving a bouquet of flowers to Hiroyuki Sonata. I mean, what a way to start your career. I know. Uh, if you talk to Hiroyuki Sonata, he does remember that day. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. You mm-hmm. mentioned horror. What is it about the horror genre that sep- that what separates the horror genre for you from other genres since you mentioned horror? Uh, it's always something about horror I always love and C to A, everything. Uh, <laughs> I in fact I do love bad horror movies too. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, and something about it is so entertaining and it's I don't know funny you ask again I'm, I said the same sentence earlier but um I never really thought about why I like horror movies but I guess um to me something very in a good sense in a good way horror movies are always there's something primitive about like how to entertain people you know like when you talk to kids they like scary stories more than you know just a good story like they get really really drawn to scary stories and I think we have that in us um you know some scary ideas and creepy feelings or that really gets to you and that's really entertainment. It's actually a good way of putting it that there is something entertaining about being scared by a scary story. It's like thrills, basically. Mm-hmm. And it is a um, very, I think, human nature somehow. And it's the basic of, um, you know, there's drama and Shakespeare and all that. And, and But it's more basic than that, mm. you know? <laughs> right. And that's yeah. one of the beauties of horror is simplicity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, Gamera, so I guess this is a good segue to this. Um, before, of course, you starred in the Heisei Gamera trilogy, directed by the great Shosuke Kaneko. Was tokusatsu a form of entertainment you were interested in and familiar with beforehand, like the Godzilla franchise? I want to say yes, but no, it wasn't. I really? was not so familiar with it. And um, so when I got that phone call, this is going to be Gamera, but it used to be there was an old Gamera. And, you know, they kind of briefly explained. And that day I went to, you know, good old rental video store. And I rented all those um, black and white old monster movies, kaiju movies. I, I don't know how many I rented, but I rented a lot and I watched all of them just to get the feeling like, what is it? What is kaiju movies? And I liked it a lot. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. And now it, like now you're a part of kaiju cinema history. I mean, that, that that's that's pretty amazing. Oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Now, of course, uh, the Heisei Gamera trilogy movies were a huge success in Japan and, of course, would gain an international following. So, of course, following the success of the Gamera trilogy, you, of course, went on to star in Hideaki Anno's wonderful film Ritual, also known as Shikijutsu. And a lot of viewers and audiences regard this as your finest performance. And I guess my question is, were you initially intimidated when being considered for the part, considering how seriously Ano takes his craft as a filmmaker? 
Hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, that movie was so somehow it was very experimental for all of us. And for Anno, he he did what he wanted to experiment. Like um he has done before Shikijitsu, he did Love and Pop. But he used to um, video camera, like a small Sony video camera. So a lot of people consider Shikajitsu would be his uh, first um, live action film and like in the very big picture way. And um, as for me too, like I did Gamera and then different dramas and before Shikajitsu, but I never, it was based on the story I wrote too. So it was, uh, I was a novel writer also. I didn't write the script. I, I mean, we did a lot of talk about the script, but I didn't write it, but I wrote the story. And um, so for us, we just gathered oh, the art department, the makeup, the wardrobe, the sound, the camera, producer, every department came to make that movie it was just, our feeling was that our philosophy was more like student film, mm. but do do what we want to do, go crazy, you know. So we didn't really think about making money based of it, or you know, it was more like something pure about it, and we just did. Um, you know, creating art. And I, I'm so lucky that I was able to do it because usually you don't get to do that with great people. Everybody was so talented in each department. And so I don't know if I'm answering to your question. But... Oh, no, absolutely. You're totally <laughs> answering. And that's that really is a perfect way to describe that movie because that movie is full of so much artistic passion, not mm -hmm. just in terms not just in terms of, of course, the cinematography, but also the art direction, the acting, all of that. It all comes together. So it all makes perfect sense. Yeah, and we didn't want to like ignore the audience at all. But at the same time, we just wanted to p pursue and keep going. What would happen? You know, to see what mm -hmm. would happen if we just focus on what we want to do. And, you know, hopefully there are some audiences will be amused or <laughs> entertained or moved by it. And, and I think, mm -hmm. yeah, it did. In this, Many were. Yeah, I mean, for some, some audiences, <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. Now, you mentioned writer um, writing. You also based a lot of Shikijitsu off of the story that you wrote, Tokimo, if I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and you did inject a lot of, personal life experiences into your role in ritual and what was that like for you and did that help you grow as an actor um perhaps uh when I was writing the novel I didn't really think about this is going to be a movie or anything because it wasn't in the script mm -hmm. form it was more novel and it was more therapy to me <laughs> you know and um but also I was focused to be a fiction also. Like I, I put so much about my personal feelings and experiences, but I've changed almost everything mm -hmm. from reality to make sure it's fiction. And because I wanted to be a fiction writer, <laughs> you know? And, um, and then when Anno saw a uh, read that, and when, when he's, said he wants to make a movie based of based on it i thought oh wow okay let's do it but then i asked him to write the script so i don't have to get too much caught on oh i wrote this no it, it, it shouldn't be like this no you know like i can just finish the writing part my you know my brain just you know forget about it and then once the script is done I can just, you know, focus about being an actor, just, you know, be, be there as an actor, just go, you know, 
digest the script as an actor, not as a writer, you know? So it was kind of an interesting experience because I, I feel like I had two roles, like two, two different, completely two different experience as an overwriter and as an actor. Yes. What was the general um, atmosphere on the set of Ritual compared to, say, the atmosphere on the set of the Heisei Gamera trilogy or any other dramas you acted previously? It's amazing. The Shikijitsu was amazing because it, I felt more responsibility because I was the lead and mm-hmm. also I, I wrote it. And so I... I had a much more responsibility. That being said, I felt like um, I had more freedom, how to act, how to deal with it, how to manipulate the character. <laughs> and um, Heisei Gamera is really, I, I was just, every day I was struggling. I, I always felt like I'm not doing the right job or a good job. Uh, I felt like I could do better, but I don't know how, because I was rookie. I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody has first, everybody has to grow little by little. And so Gamera was my first job that I had. And thanks to the, all the other professionals around me helped me go through it, but I needed those helps. And I was just so lost all the time. And, but Later, you know, I grew very slowly, but in Shikijitsu, I felt like I just broke my shell. And good just, putting up. yeah, and, and I feel like, okay, it's okay to be who I am and just go crazy, just do it, you know? <laughs> so yes, the, it was a very different experience. It was really breakthrough for myself as an uh, actor and the atmosphere that creating the, on the set was every day was really wonderful it was tough but also wonderful every day was beautiful and intense <laughs> I can imagine yeah. I mean there's a lot of long takes in ritual that like I it's hard to believe that it was all done in one shot and it makes it equally as impressive yeah, and then it was back then. It was a thirty-five milli uh, film, not digital camera. <laughs> right, so that must yeah. have been daunting, <laughs> but fun. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, of course, after this um, ritual was also a success, and then your international popularity continued to rise when you appeared in Michelle Gondry's segment for the anthology movie Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, Tokyo also similarly put you into a somewhat crazy role with a series of unfolding, uh, strange yeah. surreal unfolding events that, yes. ke- that that kept viewers in their seat, no pun intended. <laughs> yes. Um, what was your reaction to basically what you were proposed by Michelle Gondry with the role of Tokyo? Well, that was audition. I went for audition and um, but unique enough, um, you know, a lot of American auditions is that you don't get to meet the director right away unless you're you're the star already. Um, But for this audition, he was already in the room. But what's funny, interesting was um, I think it was probably Michelle's idea that he um, insisted that all the actors read the whole script before they come into the room because a lot of times you don't get to read the whole script either i mean sometimes you do but Mm -hmm. but this one they just they just kind of asked everyone to read it and then when i entered the room he asked you like what did you think of this story and i think it was important for him that actor understood the story and Mm -hmm. I simply said, um, it's cute, but sad. And he thought I understood. And and also, I think it was a, kind of after Shikijitsu. So I was sort of um, trained enough to be like to do long takes or improvising um, or just follow the script. I, I could do so many different things 
after the Shikijitsu experience. And that's what Michel Gondry was asking and looking for in the audition room. So you would follow the scene with the dialogues. And then if he likes it, he want you to continue. And even the script is finished. He's like, oh, continue. And I will do it for another 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And then like someone had to come in and say like, cut. Because Michelle wouldn't say cut. So, Interesting. Yeah, I think we had, I mean, there's a like behind the scene somewhere out there for Tokyo and then in the interview, Michelle does say, I think we had our connection right away when we met. And that's just, that's it. You know, you don't need to do more work. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you view Tokyo almost as the gateway that led to more international work for you? For sure, for sure. Um, as for, at least for myself as a career, like I never looked at it as, well, you know, I, I was born and raised in Japan. My career was in Japan. In, and after Shikijitsu, I did this one French movie called Sansa. And it went to Cannes, but I didn't attend to the film festival. And um, after that, so Tokyo happened. And I went to Cannes and I walked to, I, wa I walked on the carpet with the Oscar Axe, Michel Gondry, Pon Jung Ho together. And that's really crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. And for, but there was like part of me thinking, oh, this is just like a, these great filmmakers, they did their work and then they earned this. Like they, they, they have this attention, not me. And I was like being a little bit too harsh on myself. But at the same time, um, I felt like, oh, I need to work out like, work harder to kind of achieve a more career in the sense of not just like being famous or anything but more about if I stay in Japan my career will stay in Japan more or less I mean you know you could do great movies with Mike or whatever and then that goes to international film festivals but when I attended Khan, uh, I met with so many amazing people from all over the world, not just America and not just France, you know, it, it, people were, people were from all over the world. And I thought, whoa, what a great way to meet all these interesting people. And I want to be part of it. And in order, yes. in order to do that, I need to get out of Japan. So I decided to move to America kind of right after that. So that is, that was huge. But then it was way before um, this movement of, you know, diversity casting. So I didn't have much opportunities. There was almost zero auditions for Asian people. And my English was much worse than now. So yeah, I, I was just like, I moved to America, but I don't know where to go and what to do. So I couldn't get any jobs or not a, even a job. Like I couldn't even get one audition. Uh, maybe a few, maybe, but I did horribly anyway. Um, but then Eric Nakamura. So Eric, I became friends with Eric because he interviewed me for his magazine, Jar Robot Magazine for Tokyo. And we became good friends. And I basically, I was like, complaining about how America's um, industry is so white, whitewashed and <laughs> everybody's <laughs> casting goes to white people. And uh, he said, there's one perfect guy you should meet. And his name is Dave Boyle. <laughs> so he introduced me to him. And Dave said, I have one movie I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'm trying to mimic it. <laughs> so silly. Um, <laughs> And Dave became the, the first person um, to give me a role, English speaking role in America. And uh, that's how we started our, you know, friendship slash professional ship, all that. That's awesome. Yeah. That was a, that was a pretty spot on Dave Boyle impression, just saying. 
Thanks. Um, and of course, and of course, you know, after that, it seems like you've gotten a lot of work, especially in the indie film circuit. And you've also appeared in television. You were, of course, on The Last Ship, mm -hmm. um, which, of course, also has Hiroyuki Sonata. Yes. Um, <laughs> and of course, you were in Man from Reno, directed by Dave Boyle, which, of course, is another role that you've gar garnered a lot of praise for. I guess of the recent years since like it's take you've taken off like in the indie film circuit and in television do you have any like proud memories bad memories proud proud a proud <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> proud memories well of course it's insane for me that i got to work with hiro kisanada i mean think about my history right right <laughs> so that was um just a dream come true for real and more than anything like okay I thought I will give it a shot to be in America and work and it was just it's been hard and still hard to get a job but you know not only you got the part for a tv show but you know I'm a wife of Hiroki Sanada in a tv show it's like oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes I am proud of that moment <laughs> nice yeah. And then after that, you know, Amazon TV series, Malter in the Jungle, all those things. And it's great. And then I've gotten close to some good shows and I didn't get it. But those moments are painful. But still, you should be proud of yourself, too. And so I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to practice to feel and to think of myself I'm like, OK, be proud of it. You know, it's you got close. That means, you know, it's. It's good, and but that's a that's a practice. You need to practice on that, and it's not easy. But yeah, I mean, I'm getting older and all that, so like you know, career changes and everything changes. The world is changing, so it's never it never gets old. You know, it's the mm. it's always fun. Nice. Mm -hmm. And um. I mentioned Man from Reno earlier, speaking of which, that role gave you the task of, of course, speaking two different languages in the same movie. What was that <laughs> like for you? Um, fun. It was fun. And the fact Dave speaks Japanese, that helps too. So I don't have to explain every time because once in a while, you know, when you do Japanese uh, in American films and sometimes you have to raise your hand to say like, no, I just stuttered or... <laughs> you know because no one else catches it and um but yeah dave speaks both languages too so it was just kind of just fun and and of course we worked on script together in a sense of dialogues and make it more natural or that and he gave me a lot of freedom with the japanese dialogue and so it was just um good experience nice mm -hmm. And of course, you also garnered a lot of acclaim for your role in the Surrogate Valentine trilogy, which of course uh, recently ended with the final film in the trilogy, I Will Make You Mine, directed by Lin Chen. Mm -hmm. And similar to Ritual, you also injected a lot of personal experiences into your character in those movies. I guess my question is, what was that like for you now compared to, like, say, when you did that back in Ritual? Mm. What, what, what do you mean sorry <laughs> was it was it more was it a little more easier for you as an actor to kind of inject that into your role oh oh um, I guess I mean I didn't never compare because it's been a while since ritual and it is true um that was right after I had my second baby and Lynn actually waited for me like she was she finished filming with the, all the rest um, way before but because I was during the pregnancy she waited for me and funny enough it's like the role was a mother but it was personal in that sense but then I did a lot of personal scenes of Lynn's personal life so she wrote some scenes that it's so personal to her and based on her reality, uh, her real experience, but she put it on my character and 
So that's a fun thing to do. <laughs> it's really, you know, it's sensitive matter, but also um, I took it as a um, compliment and then trust as an actor to actor because Lynn, that was her um, directorial debut. She's an actor for a long time and she chose me to do that. So it's always a fun challenge. It's, it's, it never gets, uh, I don't know, boring about that kind of things. And, but yeah, she gives us some experience, experiences quite different from it in that sense, because I was more making it personal through someone else's experience. Very cool. Um, and funny enough, you mentioned writing. Ironically, in Man from Reno, your character that you play is a writer. <laughs> um, and I guess, what was that like for you also, considering that one day you, you, you said earlier that you wanted to be a writer, and here you are now playing a mystery novel writer <laughs> and the main character of the movie? Mm -hmm. Was that kind of, was there like a little bit of irony in that for you? Well, um, maybe, but in a sense, I, mean, I, I, I do write, and I've been writing um, here and there, essays and short stories. And so when I play a writer, it's kind of easier process for me to do the behavior acting. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, when I do the monster in the jungle, I, when I have to play the conductor, I know nothing about it. <laughs> so, you know, I had a teacher, conductor, teacher, I had to practice and I, I, not just how to conduct, I talk to the teacher um, the, about the behavior every day, you know, like be in between the conducting. That's mm -hmm. what I'm interested in. And you kind of have to, you know, make it to your, to, you know, live in your body. But yeah. when I play writer, it's, you know, all the writers are different, I'm sure. But for me, <laughs> <laughs> for me, I didn't have to work that hard on that sense you know, th that specific part and I, mm -hmm. I don't have to imagine how they would do it you know like I would just sit there open my notebook and I'll do what I would do you know your way yeah but there any writers that particularly influenced you mm. I mean, yes, but yeah, I, uh, no, not no one that it's like in um, internationally uh, translated mm -hmm. to English or no other language. But yeah, uh, it's just I don't know, a uh, self self taught writer. I, I am, nice, so, yeah, nice, excellent. Um, now, I guess the follow up question to talking about your um, success internationally, um, with the differences, of course, of how, you know, film sets are conducted in, you know, the respective countries, I guess, what is it like being on international film sets compared to, say, your experiences on Japanese film sets? Because obviously things um, play out differently. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think <laughs> this is going to sound strange, but I think it's so much nicer uh, to be in American um, set, even though, even if it's indie and very tiny, tiny indie movies, it's still mm -hmm. um, people try to do SAG schedule. <laughs> so you're nice. not overworked like Japan. Um, really? So in Japan, it's like people, no one sleeps. <laughs> you just keep going <laughs> keep shooting um so that's the that's the biggest difference mm -hmm. um but all the sets are different depending on uh, especially depending on who the director is so it's more it's not about you know which country or whatever uh, michelle was different mika is different and each director is very interesting and fun. But yeah, in terms of what what is the huge difference between Japan and America would be the schedule. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And how do you feel about the 
you don't have to answer this, but how do you feel about the Japanese film industry in its current state? Um, I think they need um, they need change big time um, because it's either huge movies or tiny teeny movies that mm -hmm. sort of we don't know where it's going to go and there's no in between and not only that I think it's more the as for actors as for camera department as for directors not many people can support their family and feed themselves because there's not much money going on and um and then there's no education and the system like a film school systems um so mm -hmm. there are some like genius appears once in a while but that's very a few and but we need if you want to save japanese film industry we need a bigger change like you know, Korea did so well in that sense because they they changed the um, film school system and they brought some Hollywood system to learn from it. And they really, the government helped a lot with the money, all those things. It, it took them, you know, more than 10, 20 years to develop that, but it paid off. Look at where they are now. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think we, we can learn from that also. Okay. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Ayako, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. And thank you so much thank for taking the time to do this interview for Asian Movie Pulse. I thank guess, you. of course. <laughs> I guess to conclude the interview, I guess. What future projects can we expect from you, whether it be acting, writing? Is there anything you'd like to promote personally? Um, so there's this movie I co-wrote with Dave Boyle, <laughs> and we just finished shooting. So it's in the uh, post-production -pro phase right now. But so Dave and I wrote it together. It's called Tokyo Cowboy. So that's the title, Tokyo Cowboy. And I'm in it too. Dave is not in it. <laughs> And, <laughs> and yeah so we'll see where it goes and uh, i'll keep you posted and that's that's uh that's what's happening right now excellent and you have a convention that you're going to be appearing at that's true <laughs> all mm -hmm. monsters attack it's called uh, all monsters attack and it will be my first time attending um conventions so i'm very excited to meet fans I hope someone will come to my booth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone. I, I'm sure plenty will come to your booth. I hope so. <laughs> um, but awesome. And we all look forward to seeing uh, what is to come in the future for your work. Thank you. Um, and I guess to conclude this, um, a lot of Ayako's work is available on streaming services, but also on DVD and Blu-ray. Man from Reno is available on Blu-ray and it can be personally purchased on the official movies website. It is also available on multiple streaming services. Shikijutsu is also available on Blu-ray in the Hideaki Anno live action film collection, which features all of his live action films, except Shin Godzilla. That's a separate release, but you get Shikijutsu in here. So, And, and it of has course, English subtitles. Yes, it has English subtitles and it will work in American Blu-rays. Region A. Great. Yes. And of course, um, the Surrogate Valentine Trilogy is available on streaming services, as well as I Will Make You Mine has a Blu-ray release, which you can purchase on Amazon. And of course, the Heisei Gamera Trilogy is available on multiple streaming platforms, as well as DVD and Blu-ray. So, all right. Well, all once right. again... Thank you for taking the time to do this interview, Ayako. And My pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And this is Asian Movie Pulse Interviews. Tuning out. Thank you. <laughs>